president of the NBA's Orlando Magic and one of America's top motivational speakers, believes that leaders with good character are made, not born. While speaking at West Point, he came across 12 benches, each highlighting a core virtue. In his book, Character Carved in Stone, Pat Williams shows us how these virtues can lead to success, not only on the battlefield, but in any area of life. All right, our friend Pat Williams is here. Welcome back, sir. Andy, nice to see you, Andrew. Good how to are have you? you. I'm good. I remember having lunch together a couple years ago when you were here for another book, one of your 110 <laughs> books, and you were so excited about this project, um, you were just glowing in, in, in enthusiasm with it. What um, excites you so much about this West Point scenario here? Well, Andrew, first of all, when you're on the West Point campus, you're immediately just covered with history when you think that Eisenhower and MacArthur and Grant and uh, Omar Bradley and Matthew Ridgway and uh, Norman Schwarzkopf, I mean, they all walked those grounds. Uh, they were all there. I mean, you're just covered with that history. I think that's the first thing that hits you. And did you know these 12 benches existed? No, I did not. I, had a, I was invited to come up and speak to the uh, sports teams at Army, and I had a great time doing that. And then after that, they gave me a tour of the campus. And we ended up in this little park called Trophy Point. And I looked around, beautiful little spot. And then I noticed a bench. Well, that's not unusual. <clears throat> except I kept counting and there were 12 of these benches. That was unusual. <clears throat> and then I thought, I'm gonna take a closer look. I'm glad I did, because what I found was a word carved into the stone on either end of the bench. And I kept checking and yes, all 12 benches had a word carved into them. So there were 12 different words on the 12 benches. And I immediately thought, this is fascinating, but what a well-kept secret. I'd never heard of that, and I'm not sure many people had. What were some of the themes that really um, struck you? Well, you, you, first of all, you saw compassion, and then you saw courage, and, and you saw words like dedication, and words like integrity, and loyalty, uh, responsibility, perseverance, service, trust, those kind of words. And, and there's a backstory: the uh, West Point class of 1934 uh, when they had their 50th reunion in 1984, they decided to have, <clears throat> have a class gift uh, to the school 50 years later, and they gave these 12 benches. And somewhere in that process, they decided to have these 12 words engraved in those benches because they thought those were words that West Point students, uh, future military leaders, should uh, live their life by and lead by. And so... That's the story that we came up with and then decided, boy, this, this has some meat to it. So, And in your book, you find graduates who line up with some of those themes. And right now we're in March Madness, of course. Duke yes. is uh, always, it seems to be there. Coach K, tell us how he fits in all this. Well, Mike Krzyzewski was a youngster growing up on the south side of Chicago. <clears throat> and Bobby Knight, who was then the head coach at West Point, came to visit him and recruit him convince his parents that this was the right best spot for their son. So Bobby went there. Uh, Mike, Bobby went back to college and Mike followed him and uh, became a basketball player there and a student and a graduate. A few years later down the road, he became the head coach at West Point. So Mike Krzyzewski has West Point just coursing through his blood system. He loves the school. And we thought he would be the perfect guy to do the forward for the book, and uh, he agreed immediately to do that. So uh, when you watch Mike, you think it's Duke, 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 but really, uh, deep within him, uh, it's Army, 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 West Point. That's, that's the, the, the makeup of Mike Krzyzewski. And the first uh, theme you mentioned was courage. Um, or excuse me, that's one I want to get to in a moment. The first theme you mentioned was compassion. Yes. And you picked an interesting person for that, Ulysses S. Grant. Well, you wouldn't think of General Grant in that light because he was leading, you know, in a very vicious war, and he was leading the, the Union troops, you know, to try and just finally end this thing and did it with relentless power. Uh, but Grant was a compassionate man. He cared deeply about his troops. Uh, he um, cared about his family. He had a wonderful marriage. 
and he cared about the horses. You know, so much of the World War, the Civil War was on horseback. And one day he's riding along a path and he sees this soldier of his on the side of the road just whipping and beating and pounding on his horse. And Grant erupted with anger, you know, came over to this young soldier and threatened him to within an inch of his life if he ever saw him do that again. So we found that was kind of an unusual look at Grant, but I think he was truly a compassionate man. Maybe another way of phrasing it, Andrew, are simply are people skills. Mm -hmm. Great leaders have people skills. They care about people and they have a heart for people. He treated, he treated people with dignity, even his enemies. Oh, I think so. And, and, and we, we saw that, of course, uh, when uh, Lee, General Lee did surrender. did surrender and the way that Grant treated him and insisted that all his soldiers treat the Southern soldiers with dignity. Uh, there's a lot to General Lee now, as we and, and General Grant, excuse yeah. me. As we conclude here, I mentioned courage um, a moment ago. And so many people struggle with fear just on a daily basis, yeah. irrational fear often. And one thing in your book that stood out to me was you said to conquer your fear, do what scares you. Yeah. And courage is so important for us. And you brought that out of a World War II story. Well, I, I did. And we talked about this uh, man, Alexander Sandy Ramsey Nininger Jr. That's a, a, a neat story, born in Gainesville, Georgia. Uh, people will enjoy reading that. Courageous but, against the enemy. Often. Yes, yes. But here, here's, uh, uh, there's physical courage, there's moral courage, and there's emotional courage, and there's intellectual courage. And there's spiritual courage. Really break it down. So we uh, we really dig deeply into this whole topic of courage. But um, uh, John Wayne probably said it best: courage is being scared to death, but saddling up anyway. Yeah. And that probably uh, summarizes it quite well, I think. But well, courage, you know, we need it every day uh, to do hard things, to do tough things. And once we show and prove that we can do them. Well, that's where confidence comes from, Andrew. And when you're confident, you're going to be successful. Well, we look forward next year. I'm sure you'll have your 111th <laughs> book, probably. So it's always great to have you here, Pat. Thanks for inviting me. I'm so glad to see you again. Thanks for being with us. If you want to learn more, Pat's book, Character Carved in Stone, is available wherever books are sold.